So I don't know if you can tell by the background of this video, but I started with a 1650, then I went to a 6600 XT, then I moved on to this 3060 Ti that I got for 280 Australian dollars, which is like 150 US dollars, which is quite frankly a bargain. No, it's not 150, it's like more like 200, but still a bargain. And now, need I say more? I got a 4070 Super. And today we're gonna to be testing it for ray tracing. Cause while this card's good, this card's even better. And I love ray tracing. So let's get into the video. Now the reason why I'm getting the 4070 Super, well, it's actually not as straightforward as you might think. So my mum's partner, he needed a PC for work. And he said, here's the budget, build me a PC. And I'm going, well, $1,200 is a lot. Why don't I just get an upgrade in that? So I built him one. I used one of the motherboards that Hardware Unboxed sent me, and then I managed to fit this into the budget. Uh, not specifically, but I got to $1,350, so I paid the excess. He paid me $1,150. So now I've got a 4070 Super, which is a nice upgrade for about $200. So he's gonna have a nice little office PC with an i5-12400F, and a Z690 motherboard, bit overkill, but he needed Wi-Fi and I had one with Wi-Fi, so I'm just using that. And then he's also gonna be pairing that with a 3060 Ti, which should work perfectly fine for what he needs to do, which realistically is just office work. All he uses is his laptop, which I think has a Ryzen 7 5700U. It's pretty bare bones, but yeah. No, he's got a nice PC now, and I've got an even better graphics card. So what I want to do first is benchmark the 3060 Ti and see how it performs in ray tracing. In terms of the test bench I'll be using, I've got a Ryzen 5 7600 sitting on a B650i motherboard from MSI, and that's paired with 32 gigs of DDR5 6000 CL30 memory. And this is all being kept in the Dan Case A4H20, a nice little mini ITX case. Kicking things off with RTX Minecraft, you can see that we're averaging around 52 FPS, which really isn't that bad, all things considered. We're on a 3060 Ti with 8 gigs of VRAM, a card that was released way back in 2020... 2020, I think. Yeah, in November. Um, so yeah, a four-year-old card at this point, and it's still hitting around 50 FPS. By no means is this a great experience, but if you had to, you could definitely play on it. I will say the GPU temp's a little high at 79 degrees, um, not what I love to see on this card. Especially with this 3060 Ti, I found that overclocking and undervolting, there was just no room. Like, it will just crash every single time, regardless of what I did. And uh, yeah, this is pretty weird for Minecraft RTX. But yeah, nobody's actually playing Minecraft RTX because it's not Java Edition, it's just Windows 10. So let's jump on to the next game. In Fortnite at 1440p with absolutely everything set to the maximum, we're averaging around 31 FPS. Which actually isn't that bad, all things considered. I know I'm saying that a lot, but 30 FPS is conceivably playable. Obviously, you're not going to do very well in gunfights, but it's usable, and especially if you were to enable DLSS, something that Fortnite does support, you could definitely bump that around to maybe 50 FPS um, using the balance preset, or even 60 if you're using performance. Um, but then again, that will sort of offset the usefulness of ray tracing, because everything will look a bit more blurry and a little less detailed. But overall, not a bad showing from Fortnite. Again, 78 degrees, not the best. So running control at 1440p on maximum settings with ray tracing enabled, you can see we're hitting around 46 FPS. This 3060 Ti is actually quite surprising in how it performs. Now, yes, control is a bit of an older game. So yeah, it will manage to run all right. But our GPU is pegged at 100%. We're pulling 200 watts on the GPU. Our CPU, however, is sitting at 2%. So not much going on there. I then ran a quick 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark and we got a score of 5,500. Not bad overall. Now let's switch over the graphics card. For the 4070 Super, I bought the Gigabyte WinForce OC 12GB just because it was in stock at Scorp Tech and it seemed like a pretty decent card. It's got a nice triple fan design and that should serve it well in terms of temperatures and cooling and I really like it. It's got no RGB which is something that I don't really like overall with my graphics cards. 
All right, first up is Minecraft, and as you can see, we're immediately getting more FPS at 83 compared to what we were getting before, which was around 45 to 50. Now, this is a significant increase. It's around 60 to 70%, and I'd say this makes it actually quite enjoyable and playable. I think that Minecraft with RTX actually does have some use here, and you can actually tell that it's turned on. Back in Fortnite now, you can see that we're hitting around 50 FPS, which is much better than the 27 than we were getting before. That's around 90% more FPS, and yeah, it definitely goes up and up from there. Now, interestingly enough, I kind of want to put DLSS on and see how it performs. Now, with DLSS on and set to the balance preset, you can see that now we're averaging 82 FPS, 84 FPS. And this is a really, really nice experience. In fact, this is how I'm going to be playing Fortnite from now, now on, with RTX on, ray tracing to the max, all the graphics set perfectly at 1440p, and DLSS on, because quite frankly, I can't tell while I'm playing. I can't tell the difference, especially in a game like Fortnite, the implementation's really nice, and hitting 84 FPS is really all I need. Um, and I enjoy a visual game. It's just my style of playing, and it's perfectly fine if you don't agree. Back in control, we're now hitting 70 FPS. Again, not much to be said here. It's a nice improvement over the 45 to 50 or so FPS as before, but it definitely isn't as big of a jump. It's around 50% more FPS. And yeah, it's pretty clear that our system is nearly twice as fast. After running that test, we got a score of 9,766. Now before we got bang on 5500, so that's pretty much double. So yeah, the GPU's quite, um, let's just say, insane. Now as you can probably tell, the 4070 Super is a great graphics card. Despite its 12 gigs of VRAM, you can play any game with ray tracing on, even without DLSS for the most part. Now when you turn on DLSS, you're gonna get a way better experience, and personally that's how I'm gonna be running my system. From now on, I'll be running at 1440p maximum settings with ray tracing on, and in those games that support it, I'll put DLSS on straight away. I love the look of ray tracing, and people like to call it a gimmick. In some games, it definitely helps. Fortnite, it looks amazing and stunning. Those rays and those that illumination is just really something extra. Minecraft, it's definitely useful, although I'm going to be using it in the normal Minecraft. And with Control, I don't actually play Control, so... um. Yeah, we'll, we'll just skip over that one. But as it comes to more games, ray tracing is more and more important. And the 4070 Super, as the title said, can it do ray tracing? Yes, it very much can, and at a good quality. And at 1440p. So, if you're in the market for a GPU and you want to do ray tracing, I can actually recommend the 4070 Super. Yes, it's 950 or so Australian dollars, but as new GPUs come out, the prices will go down and down and down. Although the RTX 5070 is allegedly going to have 12 gigs of VRAM. <clears throat> so you might as well just buy this one now. Alright, that's going to do it for this video. If you did enjoy, make sure you like, subscribe, all the normal stuff, ring the bell. It really helps out the channel. And as always, I'm TechBiz, and I'm out.